coming to the last section of um, our tutorial for input screen let me quickly show you what happens when you click on add expense or submit report what happens to the data that is filled here and then what happens to the receipts or the documents that gets attached to this particular expense okay so let me close the form before we go ahead let me quickly show you four tables behind it the staging tables this staging table is basically to hold the uh, information when the you know like uh, expense are being filled and this document staging document sheet here is basically to take the path from where you know like the file is being dragged and what is the destination file how we want to log it okay this is simple excel tables again uh, the way you want to store the data and then uh, upload these documents will be totally your choice you can uh, upload it to google drive you can upload it to uh, sharepoint uh, document library you can upload it to access database as an attachment and there are so many ways to do it uh, in this example i'm just using uh, document library local document library to do that so here once the report is finalized and click on submit report the data from this particular sheet is being copied here to expand sheet and then this particular report ID and expense ID is being automatically generated and then the created time and created by you know is filled in this is system username this is the created time this created time will always return ET time I'll walk you through in just a minute okay so now I'm gonna load up my form um, so now I'm just gonna fill in any dummy data here for example so let's see like this and let's drag a uh, dummy expense here so here is the name of the file that we attach so once I click on expense basically this data is being sent to the sheet called staging so this is the record that we just added uh, this is what I've been filled out till here and then this is automatically generated and if you have observed we drag the file from this folder like this and then this is the file so it automatically adds the, uh, you know like records the name of the file and then the path from where is you know like the full path from where is dragged to and then this is the automatically constructs the you know like in the final destination how this file name is going to be recorded okay so similarly you know like when you add more items it's gonna keep on adding down here like this in the second one we didn't attach the receipt right so the reason why we have this uh, staging ta uh, you know like um, staging table is basically so that you know like uh, when the user cancels it we don't you know like it doesn't hit the expense the actual tables so only when it's finalized and hit submit uh, it copies from here to particular here and the other reason to bifurcate this expense document and expense again is um, basically because one transaction here could have more than one receipts that's the reason why later on we can use these two tables to uh, join it, them together and then create your reports or pull them up for the approvers to review and so on okay so let's have a quick look at the code well how it actually does this the code here will be add expense add expense will basically uh, add them to staging table when we click on submit report it's going to copy the orange table to the blue you know like tables so add expense so here the first part it does the quick validation this again are all the variables the sheet the staging again these two are the worksheets uh, this is going to find the last row this a uh, placeholder a variable for uh, currency very quickly about this validation so the one the user clicks on add expense without filling up all the information is going to say okay this value is missing and then it's going to alert the user okay so it does not add it to the table immediately and you'll observe that this particular uh, alert goes away after like 10 seconds so there's a function to do that as well um, if you like it you can implement it for yourself as well okay so going back um, very quickly 
Now this particular input field is associated with the corresponding, uh, you know, like caption or label here. So F4, this is R underscore title and then suffix with underscore caption. So this is R underscore title, this caption. So if this particular um, field is missed out, it's going to return the caption report title, you know, like of this particular control. Okay. So there's a code that loops through and find out all the controls with the tag um, called inputs underscore screen one. Okay. So if you select any of these, you'll see this tag has been added to all this. Okay. So the validation codes that run, you can find it in UI controls module. And if you scroll down here, this portion basically is defining the control, looping through all the controls within page one controls of the multi-page one within this particular form, user form. Okay. And if the control has a tag input underscore screen one, then it checks if the value, if there is a value, if control dot value is blank, it's going to return again, it's construct, you know, like the controls and then this particular, uh, whatever is the control at that point of time, suffix it with caption underscore cap, and then it's going to return the caption, okay, of that particular control. So let's say this control is report only. It's going to return report. It will say report is blind, for example, okay. So similarly, if the approver is uh, not selected, it will show approver is missing and so on okay this gets hidden when it's loaded when it validates and then um if there is missing value it's gonna show up this in red and the message will be sent from the validation okay going back to the code so here it says alert caption whatever if it is not blank it's gonna return the name of the control and it says okay this this field is blank um please recheck and try again and then it make that particular label alert you know like this to visible and then it triggers you know like this trigger is basically it will turn off after 10 seconds so if you go to this code you'll say application on time starting from now and then a time value of 10 seconds it will run this label off and this code again here is basically making the visible to false okay that's basically what it's doing but later on when you're submitting it uh, let's say that you put a timer to you know like to stay on for 60 seconds and then there's another code that runs then we want to reset this so you can call this to cancel the timer so it's very easy to implement uh, and small things like this can make a difference sometimes so going back to our code here ks is basically a variable it's gonna hold the expense amount from the input screen and then these are the sheets that we're interested to deal with now identifying the last row within this particular sheet so sh is the staging sheet so here so at the moment it's going to return us row number two that is where the data is going to be filled in so every time the data is being added it's going to increment and find the you know like the last row with uh, which is you know blank and then edit the value there so here the report id report id again is basically um, if you go and check this function you'll see that it's the name of the user with the time, okay? Like MMDDYY, uh, hour, minute, and seconds, like that. So that it's always uh, unique. And then um, the report ID is basically expense ID is also, um, it concatenates the report ID. And then it's, uh, if you actually go here very quickly, if you go to miscellaneous, you should find all this small small functions so the report ID is uh, this right and expense ID will take in uh, the report ID that was sent and then it's gonna basically add a counter like with the dash and then the counter will increase every time the expense is submitted so it's gonna be one two three and so on okay so going back here within this sheet is gonna start adding to the cells whatever is the row that is the last row that is identified up here and then it's gonna find out whatever is the last row and then add to column one is gonna add the report ID to column two is gonna add expense ID title description and so on so once you go down here 
you'll see that here it's a little bit different and this is because in the approvers we have the full name and in the second column we have their ID again the ID because uh, approvers could have the same name but the ID is going to be always unique so that's the reason why we're picking the second column from the combo box of approver again these are the dates marching category and this is the amount and then this is the currency uh, USD or so on and coming down here this is for specifically for document X is a number and then this is uh, the last row from this particular staging dog uh, it's saying that if there is any item within this list box it's going to loop from zero till you know like whatever the number of list items within that particular um, whatever you know like if you have dragged and added more than one receipt to that particular expense is going to loop through and find out each and every item so every time it's um, looping through it's going to identify what's the last row in that particular staging document and keep on adding the data down here like this okay so here is the expense value uh, sorry this is basically um, the expense ID okay so if we quickly go back to this form down here you'll see that there's a hidden text box uh, one for report ID one for text box And then the first one is getting um, getting us. Uh, one of them is getting um, the path, just the name of the file, and then the other one is getting the full path. Okay. And then this is basically again um, constructing the final file name that you want to upload it to the server. It does not upload in the same file name, so that it always uploads in the unique file name, and it does not conflict with the other file names. Okay, so this is going to always be associated with expense ID number. That way it's always unique. Okay, now once it's done, it loads the data starting from row number two uh, based on the staging. Again, again, we've gone through this and then it clears the, this particular list box where we have dragged the files to. So lastly, now when you click on submit report, again, this is a simple code. this call will do the validation once more and then if there are missing fields it's going to alert the user to fill that out first and then it's going to exit and then it's going to submit this part so this will be the last code that we'll review now so if you go here you'll see like um first is identifying the staging staging sheet here let me just clear up this so it's going to identify the staging sheet is gonna find the last row within this uh, sheet and then it's, if it is lesser than two there's no data because this is two that means uh, if it is lesser than two which is one this is the header right so if there's no data it's gonna exit from their exit function otherwise it's gonna copy whatever the data is there it's gonna copy all this data and then copy and paste it here so this part copies from A to M and then whatever is the last row goes to the expense sheet find the last row in expense sheet so after coming here it's going to find the last row so if I just debug this now like this it's going to give me 11 so it's saying that it's going to be pasted to row number 11 and then at the same time it um, fills the start row variable with whatever it was found which is 11 so that um, we can fill in this created time and uh, created by right so here it finds the last row again after pasting the data here it pastes the data and then it clears the clipboard and then finds the last row with the data and basically here is adding the time and then the user here uh, this range construction method again is very simple uh, cells starting row starting column start ending row ending column so uh, basically it will identify some range like that to be added okay and then it will identify this range again uh, starting row and column ending row and column and then it construct the range like this and then it fills uh, that particular range with this particular value and then same thing for the document it goes to the document sheet finds the last row if the row is lesser than two it exits goes here and clears the staging and here 
it copies the data. If there's a data in this staging document, then it's going to copy, go to staging document, find the last row with the data, add one to it, and then that will become a new row where we're going to paste the data. There, this is the place where we're pasting the, uh, the data and then clearing the clipboard and then copy to server. Again, this copy to server is basically copying the files from here, for example, to the server document, uh, document library. Okay. So within the project, uh, wherever the project is hosted, you'll find that there is a folder called expense receipt. So this is where it's going to be uploaded to. So dynamically, it's going to set that up. But let's say that you want to copy to a specific folder. This is the part. This is where you'll take care of that. So currently, this is going to return me the part where the project is located and then this expense. But let's say that you want to upload this to uh, SharePoint library, you want to upload this somewhere, this is where you'll take care of it. So very quickly, with, within this sheet, staging document, is finding the last row. If the, you know, like, find the last row is lesser than two, exit, otherwise, it goes through from row number two till the last row. So let's see that in the staging, it goes through each and every document like this, and then it will copy, this file copy method will copy the file from one folder to another folder. So this is the value it copies. So file index, column number three, one, two, three, and then it pastes to the destination part. This is the part, and this is the file name. Again, the file name, we already thought the file name is gonna be located. Let me add a sample. So the file name is this. So whatever the, uh, the user uploads and drag to the UI is going to reconstruct the file name keeping the same extension. So when it's, um, when the submit button is clicked, it's going to copy it to this particular folder. So I'm going to clear this out. We'll last do a, uh, do a last demo to see how this is working. And then if you have any more questions, then we can talk about that as well so I'm gonna load up the form and then we'll quickly do an expense dummy we'll select any project the approver uh, let's see the margin is Starbucks um, Wheels Entertainment USD let's see ten dollars um, we'll add the dummy let's call this Starbucks we'll add it here and I'll add the expense now let's say that second time you do this is again Starbucks but this time the receipt is different so let's call this Starbucks one I'll drag it here and expense so $12 now we've added two expense items this sample title uh, ex uh, expense report and once I click on submit okay uh, now what we're expecting here is we'll see there is two document that we just uploaded and then this is automatically generated expense ID and report ID this is the data we filled in till currency and then the time is automatic uh, the user is automatic and if you go to project folder to expense receipts you'll see two documents has been uploaded okay two receipts have been uploaded one last thing to tell you here is um, for this application, I've set up the universal time to ET time. So let's say that you want your, you know, like your application to always record transaction in one standard time, so that later on you can know at what time the user, you know, like around the globe, are submitting their expenses. So for that, uh, quickly go there to module called Time Handlers. Basically, here the only thing you need to know here is irrespective of the time that your system is currently you'll be in New York, Atlanta, um, India, Brazil, wherever you are uh, it will always record the expenses in the time of uh, GMT offset minus five hours okay so let's say that you're from India and you always want to save all the transactions irrespective of where the user is submitting from you can for India, it's five hours, 30 minutes away plus of GMT, okay? So you can set it up in this fashion here. And that code is gonna take care of it, okay? So that's the last part. I hope I've not forgotten anything. Um, 
Yeah. So I think that's pretty much what I have for you in this input screen section. Uh, in our next video, we'll uh, you know like talk more about creating dashboard. We'll talk about adding approval section, and then we'll run some reports. And we'll finalize this form, um, you know, like with close buttons and the user profile and so on. And maybe we can also um, talk about some of the approaches, how you can install this application to the user, how you want this to be, you know, like to be a plugin, you want this to be a standalone application. So there are different ways. We'll talk about that before we move on to the next section of the UI UX. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send an email to me or comment on the video below so that everyone can discuss. Or um, if not, then, you know, like if you found this video informative, please do not forget to leave a like and a comment. That's going to mean a lot. So I'll see you guys in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.